Hello there and welcome to another review from my gaming vault. Today I'm looking at a Commodore 64 game again and it's F1 Tornado. So let's take a look at the fact file for this game. F1 Tornado was released in 1991 in European territories. It was published by Zeppelin Games and it was coded by Wahid Khan with graphics by Neil Hislop. The price I paid for this game was £3.16 and the current going rate for it on eBay is about £3 to £5. So I'm not going to make any money from this if I do sell it. But let's take a look at the game now and see whether I should keep it or get rid of it. So here we have the packaging. This is a budget game from Zeppelin Games. And as you can see, it's got a very big yellow F1 Tornado logo on the front and a picture of what is presumably the F1 Tornado and another plane in the background there and some clouds. Pretty typical for a shoot 'em up that's based on a plane, I guess you would say. And the spine's got F1 Tornado on it again and that picture from the front wraps around. And then on the back, we've got a number of screenshots saying fast combat action naval attack and there's a big boat on there you can see it's a horizontally scrolling shooter desert battlegrounds that one says although that looks more like a jungle than a desert to me and it also says at the bottom there high-tech weapon systems and the blurb about the game says take control of the f1 tornado the ultimate search and destroy aircraft for modern battlescape scenarios fine tune your dogfight skills and blast your opponents out of the skies with the latest high knowledge weapons I think that's a made-up word, possibly meant to be high technology, but there we go. Uh, F1 Tornado, air combat at its most deadly. Well, we'll soon find out if that's true. Quick look at the cassette for this one then. Very boring. It's a black tape with the logo of Zeppelin printed on it and also the name of the game in a very boring font. So let's take a look at the instructions inside. Nice Zeppelin Games logo there, and it says, Mission Briefing, take off from an aircraft carrier situated in the Gulf at 5.30 hours. Fly through enemy lines, eliminating any aggressive opposition. Destroy enemy headquarters and identify enemy installations. Return to base. Intelligence source... I don't know, there's a big da load of dashes there, or dots. Intelligence sources suggest the enemy's land and sea defences are ready for imminent attack. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, moving inside, it says the F-1 tornado flies from the Allies aircraft carrier based on the edge of the Gulf Battle Zone. Your mission to seek out and destroy all enemy installations. It's just the same junk as it was saying on the other section, really, isn't it? Uh, as well as its oil-cooled machine guns, the F-1 tornado can pick up further weapons from destroyed enemy aircraft. When a fighter carrying a sophisticated weapons system is destroyed, picking up the weapon system icon allows you to choose from the following. So we've got reverse fire, double fire, speed up, heat seeking missiles and cluster bombs uh, once a weapon system has been installed the F1's onboard computer flashes up the equipment available on the right hand side of the screen pressing space selects the weapon for use for a measured period of time shown below the weapon selected collecting more weapon systems icons allows the weapons to be used for a greater period of time so you can't equip multiple weapons by the sounds of it just uh, the same one and then you can either switch to a different one or get the same one again I guess uh, so prepare for battle you only have three chances to complete your mission uh, control with a joystick put connected to port 2 and there are the controls uh, and fire button fires the weapon unsurprisingly and then you've got P and Q for pause and quit and it also says here very importantly please note it is illegal to copy or back up this computer tape I'm sure lots of people paid attention to that back in the day and there's also an advert for one of the other Zeppelin games International Fiverr side highly realistic soccer simulation have you tried it? no I haven't and I don't think I ever will Here's a loading screen for the game and what can you say, it's not very good is it? You've got a picture of the plane which is not very well drawn in camouflage colours. Do you have camouflage colours on planes? What would be the point? It's up in the sky. Surely camouflage for a plane would be blue. Uh, anyway, you've then got the F1 Tornado logo which is also not drawn particularly well. A bit of copyright information and also the names of the programmers up the top there as well. Uh, or the programmers and the graphic people I should say. And a Zeppelin Games logo and uh, yeah, it's a poor loading screen to say the least. Okay, so the game's loaded. Here you can see the title screen. It says F1 Tornado. It's got a picture of a plane. Not the same plane that was on the loading screen. Probably not the same plane that was on the front cover of the game either. But it's got a picture of a plane nonetheless. And it's got a high score table with plenty of scores to aim for. Pretty decent tune in the background. Typical sort of army sounding tune, military sort of style. Are we going to get back to the title screen? There we go. So you can see the credits there as well. Code and design by Wahid Khan, as I mentioned. Graphics by Neil Hislop and the music and sound effects by Andrew Roger. Uh, that's pretty much it. It tells you the C64 version. That's useful to know, given that I've just loaded it up on the Commodore 64. 
So not much more to say about it other than I've already learned that this game does not have auto fire when you hold the fire button down. So I've switched to using a zip stick for this game rather than my usual Competition Pro because that's got auto fire on the joystick. So you might hear a bit more clicking in the background than normal. You may hear it, you may not, I don't know. Uh, because the zip stick's got more clicky buttons and also micro switches in the actual handle of the joystick. So yeah, it might be a bit more clicky than normal or I'm just saying this for no good reason. But anyway, let's crack on and play the game. Okay, so as I've already said, it's a horizontally scrolling shoot 'em up. I've just picked up the first power up, uh, which I'll get onto in a moment. I just want to clear away some enemies. Flying over the ocean to begin with, uh, you can't hit, fly past those ships. By the way, that you will crash into them, so you have to avoid them. So you get a variety of enemies coming along. The red ones don't shoot. The uh, the grey ones, the grey planes do. You've also got um, what do you call them? Guns. That's it. <laughs> Cannons on the. Uh, the decks of the ship that fire at you. Oh, oh! I guess I died then. I must have crashed into the sea. I'm not sure what happened there. Uh, there's some helicopters taking off from the deck of this thing. Let's get a power up going. So when you collect a power up, you uh, you collect it, but it doesn't activate it. You have to activate it by pressing the space bar. And you can see in the bottom right there that it's cycling through a, a bunch of different possible weapons. So you've got to hit space. When oh, I've lost another life now. This first go was always going to be a bit like this while I'm talking about it. So you have to hit space when you want whichever thing you want. So if I spe press space now, it deploys the reverse fire. Uh, you've got reverse fire, you've got um, triple fire or something like that, uh, which I can now deploy. Oh no, I've done heat seekers. Oh. <laughs> now one thing that is good is you don't lose your weapons when you lose a life. Now uh, the heat seekers uh, is what I'm always going to use because look at this, you've got like spraying three bullets up, three bullets down. Uh, and the one up front as well so you can wipe out pretty much everything in any direction the backwards fire is useless oh, I've got to the end of level boss uh, so here's the first boss and this is why this triple fire is useful because you can just sit behind it here uh, avoiding the bullets from the cannon and also it just fires this one homing bullet which you can quite easily avoid so despite being pretty crap there I have got to the end of the first stage uh, so just to show you the other power up triple that's triple it's not a spray triple fire it just fires three bullets forward uh, so it's pretty good for getting stuff that's coming at you but difficult for getting stuff that's below you or above you so yeah as I said that um, that heat seeker thing is the only one to use really you've also got speed up but I mean you want more bullets rather than speed really there's not really any need for the speed up in the game from my experience um, and there's another there's supposed to be cluster bombs as well that's what it said in the instructions but uh, unless you get them later in the game I don't know when they show up because the, the thing doesn't cycle through them uh, so weapons power up system it's annoying isn't it I'd rather just be collecting something when it's set at the right kind of icon and, in, and just getting that because that moment where you have to look at the bottom edge of the screen to work out which weapon you've currently got activated and also then press the space bar uh, just looking away from the screen from a split second can cause you to get shot because um, there's a lot of bullets flying around and they all nearly all home in on you certainly the uh, the ones from the ground and the ones from the grey planes so there we go that was the first playthrough which I actually got further than I expected based on how bad it was to start with I've got my name midway through the high score table what's going on now oh okay <laughs> you can't wrap around with the letters and numbers you have to go backwards and forwards that's annoying but there we go so there we go I got sixth place on my first go lost a lot of lives early on so yeah as I was saying the bit where you have to press the space bar to activate the weapon when the right one pops up in the corner uh, is quite annoying and I'm not really a fan of that but um, that's what I've got to deal with so I'll give it another go So the best time to deploy a power up is when the red um, enemies come past because they don't fire anything whereas the grey ones do and sometimes they'll fire a sneaky one back at you just as they're about to leave the screen. So I want the uh, the, tri the heat seekers, here we go, right heat seekers are on. It gets a lot easier from this point now. Once you've got one deployed they last quite a long time. You can see there's a timer there you get about, I don't know if that's 80 seconds or 80 units of random time that these kind of games like to have uh, but you can see you've got plenty of time to wait to deploy the next uh, power up so that's good 
So in terms of the gameplay, very straightforward horizontally scrolling shooter. That's a terrible bit of graphics just below me there where the, the beach just starts. Um, yeah, that's poor. Uh, graphics are okay, generally speaking. The, the ships are nicely animated. Uh, there's, you know, the movement of everything is pretty good as well. I'm going to need to... to do me power up again in a second here let's just try and get past this lot oh now i've put speed up on which i did not want because there's just no need for it luckily there's another power up come along there heat seekers there we go back we go so yeah just that moment where you're looking away from the screen to work out which power up it's on uh, you can lose lives quite easily at that point so far i've managed to get through it not too badly but um Getting towards the end of the first stage again. I've got a power up in reserve as well, but I shouldn't need it for this point because, as I say, you literally just sit yourself here, wait for that homing one to uh, come along and just move out of the way of it. It's really easy to get rid of what is an absolutely massive tank, by the way. Uh, I don't know uh, who, who designed that tank or who built it, but it was huge. Uh, so yeah, level 2, we're in the pyramids now, again it's not very well drawn. Some of the background graphics are quite nicely drawn, some of the scenery, and some of them are quite terrible. So, oh, need another power up again. Oh! I lost a life, well there you go, that was the first life I lost, so it was not too bad. These helicopters can be a bit tricky if you haven't got the uh, the extra power-ups. It can be quite difficult when they come flying on the screen. Oh, crashed into the power-up ship then. That was a disaster. Uh, so in terms of sound effects, there's no, uh, there's no music in games, only sound effects. Um, but they're all right, you know, they're pretty straightforward. Shoot them up type noises, nothing very spectacular, uh, you know bullet noises, explosions, that kind of thing. I really want to heat seekers again there. And I'm going to keep this one in reserve. Hope oh, that's what I meant about sometimes they fire a sneaky bullet back at you and they've gone off the screen. Not a fan of that, that's quite naughty, but uh, as long as you don't sit too far back on the screen, generally you can avoid those when they do come at you. Oh god, it's gone from uh, not being too bad a playthrough to really terrible now. Oh, and there goes. Oh, still got a life left. I thought that was it. But yeah, I've got no lives left now. Oh, I've got still got one life left. I must have just gone. Okay, so this is uh, the second end of level boss, and unfortunately, I've missed my opportunity to deploy the uh, the power up I wanted to, which was the three-way power up. Although you can just sit. Oh, I thought I could sit there. I nearly got away with it. Really, what I want is the triple fire that goes forward, because then you can concentrate all the fire on the helicopters rather than it just spraying up and down but as you saw you can also get quite close to the helicopter and shoot it with the multi-way heat seekers and actually do quite a bit of damage one or one or two bullets will get you eventually but uh, that's one way of doing it that i've found but actually the best way is to uh to use the three-way fire and just kind of dodge up and down if i hadn't lost so many lives earlier on in that level i might have been able to get past it but i will give it another go don't think you probably need to see the first level again. Uh, it, I'll just try and get through the second level and show you the end of that and then move on forwards from there. Okay, I've had a few playthroughs and been dreadful. Uh, I'm back on level two. Let's see how it goes. Uh, in terms of enemies, uh, it adds those helicopters that come in like a, a sort of block of four. Uh, to this level that weren't in the first one otherwise it's all the same enemies as the first level just a bunch of different planes that fly af at you for the most part let's see how I get on here oh there goes a life just update my heat seekers there It's pretty generous with the power-ups on this second stage, but it is definitely more difficult as well. Oh, and there goes another life. You really need to stay down the bottom when these helicopters come on. Gonna need that three-way fire soon for the end of level bosses. Just trying to, oh, just trying to keep my eye on the uh, triple. There we go. Right, let's do it. Let's see if I think I'm near the end now. Yeah, here we go. Oh, that's a terrible start. Well, basically the idea is if you keep moving up and down, then theoretically you can avoid those heat-seeking bombs. But I've just done a terrible job of that again, haven't I? Awful. 
Okay, I can't be bothered to put my name in. Let's uh, let's go again. Okay, so here I'm at the end of level boss again, and so far I've got one life left, two lives left, because uh, I've got the triple. So as possible, okay, I've got one of them now. That's going to help. Come on, there we go. Finally done it. Wasn't a very good playthrough up to that point either. I, I lost lives in very silly places and accidentally deployed the speed up. Wow, that's a lot of power ups all of a sudden. Ooh. Right, now I want to go back to the Heat Seekers because they're the best thing for the majority of these levels. So you've got some black planes that come in on this stage that kind of hover a bit, like go backwards and forwards a little bit. Uh, but again, they're, they're much the same as the previous uh, enemies. It's just more of the same, really. Again, fairly boring. Uh, backgrounds and stuff like that as well um, so yeah there's there's not much to say about it I think there's four stages uh, so this is the third the final one must be that one that claims it's a desert stage uh, on the instructions but it's actually more like a jungle stage oh dear oh I've got extra lives I've actually got two ships I must have got a, a ton of points and got extra lives what are these things Heat seekers, keep the heat seekers going. Oh, there goes another life. So I've still got one life left. Uh, okay, so yeah, I'm in the jungle now. Actually, that's that stage that claimed it was a desert stage. Wow, those things flying out here is quite intense. Uh, yeah, what can I say? It's a it's a pretty basic scrolling shoot 'em up. The graphics are okay. The sounds pretty boring. The power up system's a bit annoying. Um, yeah, just that leaning down to or looking away to, to just press the... Uh, oh dear. There's a lot of power-ups on this stage, that's nice. Um, oh, and that's my last life gone. I was probably quite close to the end. Yeah, in fact, there was the end of level boss. And I got the top score, so on that point, I think I'm going to leave it because I don't think I'd get past that stage to get to the, uh, the next level anyway. Uh, I think I've seen enough of the game. It's, uh, it's pretty average all around. I mean, for three quid or whatever it cost back in the day, uh, if you like shoot 'em ups, I think you'd probably get your money's worth out of it. But I don't see myself ever playing that game again. So that'll be it. I'll be selling that one, putting it on the for sale pile along with a bunch of other games. And that will do for this one. So if you've got any thoughts about F1 Tornado, then as always, please leave a comment and let me know what you think. That's another review completed then. That means it's time to pick a game at random for the next review. Except it's not random because there's only one left in the tin. And that game is... PS1 game RC Stunt Copter. So that's what I'll be playing next time around. And I'll also then be picking another 20 games out of my collection to play in the future and picking a game at random from that selection for the game after. So hope that all made sense to you. See you in the next video in the near future. Thanks very much for watching this one and bye for now.